Welcome to this Tech Talk, Conquer Pipeline Design Challenges Top Tech Tips. My name is Phil Senior and I am the Senior Product Manager for Autopipe, responsible for the strategic positioning and management of the product. I have 30 years of experience in pipe stress analysis and I've been with Bentley for 19 years. Assisting with this seminar is Pierre Chenning who after 20 years of working for international organizations, now runs his own specialist consultancy. Pierre has been supporting Autopipe and other products since becoming a Bentley partner in 2010. In today's tech talk, we will look at some challenges faced by pipeline engineers and Pierre will explain how you can use Autopipe to address these. They will be rapid pipeline routing, soil and boundary conditions, water tables and buoyancy, pipeline upheaval analysis, overburden analysis, and then three seismic analysis conditions, wave propagation, fault crossing, and liquefaction of soils. Before all of that, and for those not familiar with Autopipe, here is a brief summary of its general capabilities. Autopipe is an industry leading pipe stress analysis product with all the static and dynamic analysis load capabilities, including multiple and single response spectra, buoyancy that we will speak about today, and special modules for fluid transient, thermal transient, ASME 8 Division 1 and Division 2 flange analysis and a soil property calculator that we will also be seeing today. Linear and nonlinear analysis using the operational condition approach or load sequencing is also possible. We have 30 metallic and non-metallic design codes. We are interoperable with all the major plant design products. We include a stress ISO and autopipe nozzle for the advanced and nuclear users. There are 27 vendors for hangar selection and we have vessel and equipment and extensive code and material component libraries. So for all the conditions we will look at today, we need to use soil and autopipe's buried piping module. The module provides simplified soil restraint force versus displacement relationships for each direction relative to the orientation of the buried pipe. These are considered as stiffness values K1 and K2 and the ultimate soil resistance force P1, which is the transition point from elastic to plastic behavior. The soil module has an automatic soil stiffness calculator, which calculates these soil stiffness values for the user for various soil types in four directions, laterally, actually, vertically up and down for differences in uplift and downward bearing behavior using one of four methods. The autopipe method, which is based on reference information and calculations as outlined in autopipe program help. The American Society of Civil Engineers 2001 with 2005 addenda method based on information from the guideline for the design of buried steel pipe by ASCE and the American Life Lines Alliance or ALA. The Piping Research Council International 2009 method and a user defined manual method. The module also calculates the virtual anchor length to assist with soil spring spacing. Advanced soil capabilities including traffic loading, seismic wave propagation, building settlement and upheaval analysis are also controlled by the soil calculator. Autopipe can handle modeling and analysis of buried piping systems with nonlinear properties defined. The soil supporting a buried pipe may provide nonlinear support, either softening or stiffening as the load of the soil increases. For example, the final stiffness can be very low, which means the soil is yielded and provides no more resistance. Okay, first we will look at a method for rapid modeling. Consider the situation where you have a terrain geographical survey 
How do you benefit from this information when it comes to modeling your pipe route? Taking the GPS data and processing it in Excel using one of the templates provided in Autopipe gives the basic centerline route of the pipeline. The user can also define the pipe size and the position of fittings like bends and tees during the import. By creating a dummy model, the new pipeline route can be inserted and subsequently completed for analysis in a matter of minutes instead of hours of manual modeling. The process requires the data to be a fixed format. So use one of the templates in the template folder of the program's installation directory, depending on the type of data received. Insert the GPS data and define the coordinates and the pipe size and then save. Pierre will now talk through the process in Autopipe. The best way to define the geometry of a pipeline in Autopipe is to import the geometry from Excel. Not only is it fast, there are no chances of making mistakes. The local coordinate template can be used to import the data. The raw data with the coordinate of the vertex is supplied by the surveyor. Then we transfer the coordinate from global to local and change them from meters to millimeters. At the same time, the angles are the vertex are calculated. Now we can copy the local coordinates and paste them into the template. Please note that the first line contains the global coordinate of the origin, to start the pipeline at the global coordinate. Then we select global for the first element and we input the diameter of the pipeline in the second column. The first column indicates the type of component. For the first element we select a pipe run. Now we select local for the second element and populate this value in the column. The diameter is also populated. In the first column, we use a formula to select a pipe bend depending on the angle of the vertex. This will insert the bends automatically. The file is now ready to be imported in Autopipe. We move to Autopipe and start a new calculation file. First, we select the piping code as V318 and select a unit system that matches the Excel files unit. The vertical axis is set to set. The program automatically turns on pressure elongation for this code. Now we need to input the pipe specification. The diameter is selected the thickness is input as 27 millimeters. The selected material is IPI 5LX X65. Two thermal cases are defined. The design pressure is 150 bar G for both cases and the temperature is 10 degrees C and 75 degrees C. Let's import the pipeline. We go to File, Insert Model, Coordinate, and we choose the Excel file. Autopipe checks and validates the file before importing it. After clicking Import, the program will show the pipeline on the screen. and we'll ask where it has to be pasted. We select Use Actual Coordinate to use the global coordinate of the first point. The program shows a message 
that the model has been successfully inserted. To see the pipeline model, we click on View Zoom Extend. Now we can see the pipeline and the original point A00. We select the point A00 and we delete it. At this point we have only the pipeline model. If we zoom in, we see that the pipeline has a standard long radius bends. In a pipeline the bends are smooth. In order to be able to be cold bended at field and also to allow the tools to travel inside the pipe. In this case we will use 40 diameters, so that means 36 meters. To quickly change the bends, we open the grid, select bend, change the value at the first one and then we populate the values to all the bends. Now if we zoom in again, we can check that the bends have the appropriate bend radius. So, in less than 5 minutes, we have been able to model the geometry of the pipeline in Autopipe. So Pierre showed us how efficient the coordinate import to Autopipe is, saving many hours of modelling time for each pipeline. Now we have some geometry routing, we need to assign the soil properties and the boundary conditions. One check the user might perform is a simple method by Jacob Pieter de Hartog that compares the deflection of the pipe due to its weight plus contents and soil cover over a critical buckling length with the theoretical height of bowing due to an increase in temperature over the same length. Should the deflection due to the weight be greater than the theoretical height of bowing, the pipe will remain in the ground. The method does not account for overbends, and this can increase the likelihood of buckling. For this we will need upheaval assessment, and we will cover this later in the seminar. So with these parameters, our 36 inch hot pipe has sufficient soil cover to remain in the ground. So we can continue with the other soil and analysis boundary conditions. Pierre will now show us how to use Autopipe to apply boundary conditions. We have the pipeline modeled. Now we want to apply the boundary condition. The first node is located in the middle of a long straight section and therefore correspond to a virtual anchor. We will locate the first anchor there. The last point corresponds to the location of an anchor block at the entrance of the gas plant. So we will also locate an anchor at that point. Now we have to apply a soil model to the pipe. This pipe is going to be built in a desert, so we want to use loose sand. In terms of displacements and stresses, loose sand produces very conservative results. First, we select the complete model. Second, we insert soil properties. This soil model can be reused many times, so in the soil tag I use the diameter, installation horizontal or vertical, and the distance from top of the pipe to ground. To help the user, there are different soil calculation methods included in the program. We will use the ALL 2001. Then we have different soil properties for clay or sand. We select loose sand. Next, I enter the depth to the center line of the pipe. We can introduce two soil properties, like loose sand and then sand, and the program can calculate the pipe for both model and for the average soil condition. Now we specify the distance between the soil springs. We will use 1.5 times the diameter of the pipe. The model is ready to be calculated. Thanks, Pierre. So many of the pipelines can be either submerged, i.e. offshore, or if on land, can be below the water table. Should this be the case, then buoyancy is something we should be considering. At some point in the pipeline's route, it might cross terrain that has a high water table. The recommended buried depth could be below this level. 
This will have the effect of reducing the weight of the pipe and the contents that is holding it down by the buoyancy amount. This could be significant and would affect the depth required for the pipe to remain in the ground. The water table can be defined differently for different soil properties. It can be defined as a low and a high value in the soil calculator. Not only is it used to calculate the buoyancy force, it is also used in the circumferential buckling calculations due to soil overburden loads. For the cases where the pipes are in water, either subsea or in flooded trenches, the buoyancy effect can be considered by turning on the feature for the submerged segments. In this case, there is no soil holding down the pipe, so it is likely it could float. Another pipeline challenge is the prevention of upheaval buckling. Upheaval buckling is a serious problem that can be encountered during the operation of trenched and buried pipelines. Oil and gas pipelines are usually operated at temperatures and pressures well above the conditions under which the pipe was laid. The resulting axial expansion can cause significant axial compressive loads in the pipe wall due to the resistance of the soil which is generally referred to as NCAP force. Under certain circumstances, buckling can occur, sometimes exposing the pipe to risks with potentially disastrous consequences. The only resistance to the pipe as it buckles is that provided by the surrounding soil. As the backfill material over the pipe is weaker than the in situ material beneath or at the sides of the pipe, it will tend to move or heave upwards hence the turn upheaval. Preventing the pipe from breaking through the surface can be simply a task of burying it deeper. A manual approach to determine the required depth is given in the American Lifelines Alliance, the ALA guidelines. The method considers the likely initiation sites, i.e. the overbends, and assesses the vertical displacement and stress at these points one by one. It requires splitting the pipe at each location and providing a frictionless, horizontal-only restraint. Increasing the burying depth or smoothing the overbend can help prevent the upheaval. Buoyancy can also complement the upheaval effect. So having software with the ability to correctly consider buoyancy is important. Some reports talk about limiting displacement one critical issue is the ratcheting that can occur. Infill prevents the pipe returning to its original starting position during an operating cycle. The movement can increase to the point where the overbend is large enough to cause buckling. For loose sand, ALA allows 3% of the diameter as the limit on vertical displacement. Autopipe version 12 now has upheaval analysis that follows the method proposed by Dr. K. Peters. The method assesses the soil and pipes resistance to buckling and recommends an increase in soil depth if upheaval buckling is likely. The process can assess the whole model at the same time unlike the manual approach from ALA. It determines where all the overbends are and performs the analysis all at once. Initiating upheaval analysis is carried out in the soil calculator. The only option is to use K. Peters compression force calculation or not. When checked, the calculation will use a non-iterative thermal and pressure axial force values over more accurate autopipe axial force due to thermal and pressure loadings. Checking this option produces more conservative results and is a good starting point to determine approximately how much soil depth is required. Pierre will show you shortly that at point A289 there is an overstress at an overbend. The large displacement and stress indicates upheaval buckling has occurred. The output report shows that for this point an increase in depth from the current depth of 1350 to over 4 meters is recommended. So let's see how we do this in the program. To calculate the model, we go to Analysis, 
run static analysis. When the calculation ends, we go to combinations to see the load cases, stress combination and non-code combination. The program has prepared the stress combination according to the selected code. Then we ask for the envelope of the highest stress ratio. The program will show the maximum stress ratio and the location in the model. There is a node with an stress of 124%. Let's take a look at this node. This is a high point of a vertical vent. I want to see the displacement of this node at the hot design temperature. So I select the deflected shape for the hot case. As we can see, this point has a large vertical displacement. The location with high probability of upheaval buckling also have high stress due to the large bending moment. So upheaval buckling and high stress goes together. The vertical displacement in percentage of diameter is also much higher than the laboratory test to avoid racketing in the pipeline. That means that there are high probabilities that in a few cycles the pipe goes out of ground. Now we will activate the upheaval buckling tool in AutoPipe to see what can do the program to help us. The upheaval buckling is activated in the soil dialog. We just need to check a box to consider upheaval calculation and also check use k peters as the calculation method. The upheaval tolerance are not considered for the k peters method. Now we need to run the analysis again. We are going to filter the results to limit them to this area. I am requesting the soil report for the point selected. When we ask the program to verify upheaval buckling, the program adds a column in the report indicated the recommended depth of the pipe. In this case, the program shows that for this node we require 4 meters of soil cover to compensate the vertical force of the pipe. We have modified the model to move this point down 2 meters. So now we have 3 meters on top of the pipe. When we move the pipe down, the angle of the bend is lower and the vertical force is reduced because the sign of the angle is lower. We need to move the pipe down at least from a distance half of the critical buckling length from both sides. Beside of the reduction in the angle, the additional weight compensate the vertical force. We have also added few points to this crashy the soil model. So now we have different soil models in this area. On the screen we can see different color for each of the soil model used. That's why in the tag of the soil I include the depth of the top of the pipe. If we check the soil property dialog, we can see the different depth of the pipe for each soil model. Now we run the analysis again. We limit the result to this area. When we check the soil report, the program indicates that there is no risk of, of upheaval buckling in this area of the pipe. 
So now we will check again the deflection shape for this section of the pipe. As we can see, the vertical displacement for this node is now very small. But, if we zoom out, we see that there are more points that may require our attention. Remember that when we modify one area, the problem may move to the sides. So we need to activate the verification of the upheaval buckling for all the model and see if there are other sections that require a modification. Thanks, Pierre. Pierre is using the release version of Autopipe version 12.0. The next release will have a dedicated report for upheaval and has removed the tolerances from the selection dialog. Similar to the Autopipe Time History Post Processor, we are also planning an upheaval buckling post processor or graphical display of the results. Using this feature available in version 12.1 for the advanced and nuclear versions, you can rapidly determine if the pipeline is at risk of upheaval buckling, adjusting the buried depth and or the route, smoothing the overbends as Pierre showed, will reduce the risk of upheaval. A later development will automatically smooth the pipeline where upheaval is identified. A subsequent upheaval check will be required following any geometry change. Being able to determine the optimum pipeline burying depth will also minimize the excavation costs, making the installation of the pipeline much more cost effective. Overburden analysis concerns itself with the weight above the pipe, causing circumferential loading in the pipe wall. Not only are we considering the dead weight of the soil above the pipe, we can also consider live traffic loads from trucks, railways or aircraft. The method follows an approach based on the ALA guidelines and the live load can be based on standard specifications or user defined. There are however some kinds of live loads we are not considering. From within the soil calculator you will find the overburden settings. Here you can select the type of traffic load and describe the trench and backfill details to determine the soil weight. The live load is set per soil property and can be varied by changing the pipe identifier. The effect of the surface loading needs to be checked for through wall bending and ring buckling. We provide various industry standards for checking these stresses and default to a design procedure for buried safety related piping at nuclear power facilities by Adams and others. There is a separate results post-processor for overburden loading and other buried loads that we can use to create the automatic combinations. Pierre will now consider some live loads on this example. Now we are going to apply an external overburden load to the pipe. So I select a section where a highway is crossing over the pipe. We have changed the soil properties in the area where we want to apply the load. As you can see, the overburden area has a different color. I want to show the external load definition. So we open the soil properties for this soil identifier. And there is a button to define the soil overburden load. In this dialog there are several options, like predefined loads, different trench options and others. Now I close the dialogs and we are going to run the pipeline calculation. I'm doing a demonstration of an overburden calculation, but we can also define the elevation of the water table and run a buoyancy calculation. For the overburden, we need to specify the post-processing option. Like that we want to add this stress to the primary stress or the safety factor that we want to use. Then we go to combination and in the code stress tab we can check that the ring buckling category has been added. Then I will open the stress code compliance report. 
to see the results in the area affected by the overburden, we ask the viewer to find the point. Here we can check the ring buckling stress versus the alloy ball stress. We can also check the stresses or the stress ratio in the graphical interface. As you can see, the ring buckling stress is low compared to the alloy ball. Thanks again, Pierre. Our next three conditions relate to seismic analysis, and the first is wave propagation. Whilst it is possible to run a linear dynamic analysis in Autopipe for buried pipelines, we can also include the seismic effect statically. The same procedures by Adams et al. that we use for the overburden analysis also has a method to include the effect of seismic waves as an equivalent temperature increase. The seismic wave data is defined in the soil property calculator for different soil identifiers. Select one of the three wave types, compression, shear or Rayleigh. This will alter the coefficients used in the calculation and other factors coming from ACE and ALA. The soil calculator only determines the value of the equivalent temperature increase. The value needs to be combined into an existing thermal case that will be used in the seismic plus thermal category in the combinations. And for this, we have an additional loading function. The buried piping post processor tool you saw earlier is used to set up the automatic combinations in line with the recommendations of Adam et al for seismic wave loading. The seismic wave combinations are automatically included in the code combinations and results. Next, we will take a quick look at fault crossing. With the large distances that pipelines travel, there are many occasions where they might cross a known geological fault. Provision has to be made to accommodate the large permanent ground displacement that might occur. This can be done by providing flexibility and strength to withstand the displacements or by mechanical means. Analytical methods are based on pipe strains and one approach is proposed by Alla based on Newmark Hall method. Should this simplified method not be valid, it recommends the use of finer elements with soil springs. We do not have a specific feature for autopipe for fault crossing and since autopipe is based on elastic analysis with small displacement approach, the recommendation is to create additional points on each side of the fault and apply progressive interpolated displacements. Finally, we look at liquefaction of soils. A soil issue faced by pipelines is known as liquefaction and can occur in saturated soils. Usually stimulated by an earthquake or other changes in stress, the cohesion of the soil is lost and it starts behaving like a thick liquid. Since the soil is now behaving like a liquid, any pipe in the soil will experience a buoyancy force. This YouTube film shows liquefaction in action. The voice you're hearing belongs to a survivor of a rare phenomenon known as liquefaction that turns solid ground into a river of mud after an earthquake hit here in Indonesia. The survivor we interviewed used to live in this village, seen in a video that was widely shared on social media. Very scary. Pierre will show us how to apply liquefaction effects to our model between nodes A42 and A50. We are interested in preventing the pipe from lifting up. Now, let's see how to simulate a soil liquefaction. 
we have highlighted the section with a soil that is at risk of liquefaction. Note that the soil definition for that section has been deleted and anchors were placed at both ends. A water table is defined with a fluid specific weight evaluated to 1.6. We run the analysis to check stresses and displacements. The stresses are higher than the allowable. The large displacement values are violating the linear analysis assumption and should be considered as an indication only. Now we insert guides every 25 meters to evaluate the buoyancy forces that need to be resisted. The analysis is run once again. The stresses are now acceptable. We can use the results grid to retrieve the support load and use those values to calculate the needed counterweights. A single value is then applied as a weight on the selected point and the guides are deleted. Through the input grid, the user can specify the exact load needed at each of the points. The last analysis is run and results are checked once again. The stresses and displacement should be now acceptable. The anchors will protect the pipeline outside of the liquefaction area. And the additional weight keeps the pipe from going out of ground. Thanks, Pierre. So in summary, Pierre showed us how we can rapidly import terrain geometry directly from survey data by utilizing the Excel import, and also how to assign the boundary conditions to the soil model. Also how to check upheaval and determine correct excavation depth. Analysis for circumferential buckling due to overburden loads and consideration of liquefaction of the soil. We also saw it was possible in Autopipe to apply buoyancy and consider fault crossing and seismic wave propagation. Thank you all for attending the seminar and I thank Pierre for his assistance. You can contact either of us at these email addresses. You can check out our YouTube channel for Autopipe and you can also connect to us on LinkedIn. Thank you again and goodbye.